in another universe. Bird, four to Thomas. Thomas in was to a J. Back to Thomas. Thomas is going to get Vassell at the back post. And it's a goal for Kyle Vassell. Oh, we're also the headline game as well. 21st versus 24th. Pick up some points, Exeter. I've never cared this much about Exeter in my life. White House. Ward. Nombe! Nombe! Lewis with a free kick. Left footed on the left hand side. He's got straight in! Adam Lewis with his first goal of the season. It's 2 0. White House on this penalty. The two star player, inexplicably the worst player in this starting 11, is on the penalties. But he scored it nonetheless. Lewis finds Vassell on the opposite side. He's putting it back in for Jay. It's four! We're out. I mean, this is lovely passing play from Exeter. Oh, that's a two footed challenge. <laughs> Can you tell Jerry Barnes, their manager? Christ on a bike. Thomas. Thomas. Mm -hmm. Just being kind for the neighbours. I've not done any buttons. I'm not clicking any buttons. Four points clear. No, six points clear. We've gone ahead of Bristol Rovers. We're not even the next one in danger now. Huge result. Kickoff highlight is always concerning, although it has got into our possession. But Darling's headed that forward. And Twine is in. Hmm. Key. Linton! Oh. It's gone out to Bowler again, but I think we've seen the highlight. Oh, it's unfortunate. I am proud of the efforts. Even if it wasn't to be. I think we should avoid relegation, though, because Burton were beaten by Bristol Rovers, which does mean Bristol go ahead of us, but survival. Hello and welcome to Exeter. Or should I say, welcome back if you're with me for that Game Blast experience. But no, this time, this time we're here as ourselves, not as Israel Elba, as that was the case then. Everything appears to be very adequate. I love the fact the training ground is called Cat and Fiddle. Something to do with the rhyme, maybe? I don't know. It mentions the club history here, and whilst they are founded in 1901, Exeter have never been above the third tier in English football. They've never been to the second tier, the now championship. So, in 121 years of playing football, they've never hit the top two divisions of English football. And whilst the prevailing reason why I've chosen Exeter to do here, as a series, is because of my time with them in the FM Game Blast, when I did a little bit more research, that was the secondary reason. Or became the secondary reason. St James's Park, also quite thematically good for this year. We've started at St James's Park, we're going to end at St James's Park as well. That being said, I do notice, of course, the capacity is only 8,700, so unless there's significant expansion space, good chance we don't actually technically end at St James's Park. The media prediction is fifth as well. This is the squad going in. This is one of the things I was intrigued by because I did not know how many of the players were actually originally there because we joined Exeter in the FM Game Blast in the second season and I did the very end of that season. So I don't know who was signed by the previous person in the roster or the AI before them. Uh, Sparks is his name, Sweeney, Collins I think was still there, although we don't think he played all that much. Matt Jay of course, uh, Nombe, they're all names I do recognise, Sam Stubbs as well. I think the goalkeeper definitely changed, we had a low knee by the time we got there. A lot less names than I was expecting to see there that I actually recognise. I was expecting more, I will make it a target to actually try and get some of them back in, maybe. So the targets are reach the group stage of the Father Jonathan's trophy, which is mandatory anyway. League 2 top half is their demands, even though we are predicted 5th. Second round of the FA Cup and just be competitive in the Carabao. Cool. Develop Skybet League 2's best youth system. I like that board. I like that. Especially like that because I did tailor my manager towards youth players. Can I just tell them not to send any of these, please? I should just say, as I just accept everything there, that A, transfer window is open for this one. I am doing the initial transfer window for this series. And we are on the January update as well. So all of the players have a, will have their updated updated attributes and locations and all that jazz. So Joe Linton will be a midfielder now, for instance. Still doesn't. I still don't think he has enough tackling. I've seen Joe Linton. I still don't think his tackling's high enough. So what we're going to play here is the Volante system. Now, I've not tried this at a level such as League 2 yet. I've never tried it this far down. I tried it in, obviously, the second tier of Spain, which, I don't know, sort of equivalent to the lower end championship, probably, for the most part. But I've never tried it this far down in a football system. So let's try it, shall we? I used it in the FM Game Blast, and they were in League One at that point, and it 
did seem to work two losses in nine, two wins in nine though. Five draws. But it does appear that we do have a competent goalkeeper on loan. I've just told the assistant manager to give me the best 11 here. This first 11 seems to be relatively competent across the board. Josh Key was there actually, so that's another name from before. Giovanni Brown was there, although he was unregistered when we were playing with him. But I will check these Volante positions, and there are four players that can do it relatively okay. Two on two starts, which isn't great. One of which is a central midfielder. He definitely should be doing that. Matt J did play that role for the majority of my time in control of Exeter. So whether he's going to be better there or better as an inverted winger on this side, I don't know. What foot is his predominant one? He is right-footed, actually, so not a bad shout. Decent crossing, better finishing, more of an inside forward. And I know Josh Key is right-footed, so yeah, he won't be going there and is actually more... Doesn't really have the technical ability defensively as a right-back, but I think that's pretty much where he played for me. We don't have the left-back that we had in the game blast either, though, which could be a problem because he was very good. Can I get... Plattenheart, please. If you're not following me on Twitch, go do that. The link will be down below. I'm playing Hannah over there. I bought Plattenheart for 1 million. He's ridiculous. He's still ridiculous. If you've been with this channel long enough to have seen the Hearth Berlin Challenge I did a couple of years back, yeah, 30 plus assists in two years, I think it was. Plattenheart is still ridiculous. I would like a Plattenheart esque level left back, please, here. Otherwise, I'm going to feel slightly disappointed. Striker wise, Nombe was playing winger, actually, when we were. With them previously, there's three players here on loan who can all do pressing forward. What are, you do what are you doing, Exeter? Why have you got so many loan pressing forwards? I can't imagine they're all meant to be pressing forwards. Sanzala is a striker. Amond is a striker. And 33. Oh, no, no, they all are strikers. Why have you loaned a striker from Newport? They're in the same division. Why have you loaned a 33-year-old striker from a team in your own... Sorry, why have you loaned a player from Barrow? Who are definitely worse than you. Goalkeeper makes sense. He's from Sheffield Wednesday. Good reflexes, good aerial reach, good one-on-ones, actually. The mentals are lacking on him, but he does have the three key attributes that I look for in goalkeepers on this year's game, which is aerial reach, reflexes, and one-on-ones. They seem to be the three most important ones on this year's game, so that's the ones I aim for, and he's got all three of those, so I quite like that. So in this transfer window, we're looking mostly for those midfield players and probably a player to play on this right side who actually has a left foot, along with a left back as well, so... A few left-footed players we're looking for, along with midfielders, seems to be the main idea. Scott Brown, backup goalkeeper, is functional, 36 years old. He's going to have to do for that first year, and Jack Arthur, a third choice, is terrible. Oh, Josh Coley was there as well. He's okay to start with. Potential ability slightly decent, right-footed as well, so he could be the backup on that left-hand side. Or Giovanni. Oh, Giovanni Brown could actually be the starter on that right-hand side. He is left-footed. He's not great. He probably, if I could, if I could have him as the backup on that side, I would. But this guy appears to be just a competent backup left back. You've got to be a potential Kyle Taylor, 21 years old. If I could train you a little bit further back, that might work. You too. You're sort of a 21 year old with a bit of potential, perhaps who could do that midfield role again. Not particularly quick. That was the main problem actually I had with the Exeter squad. Is not particularly tall and not particularly quick. Like just lacking in both of the main physical areas which was odd. The only two people above six foot were the two centre-backs and the goalkeeper that we loaned in, actually, so three. And none of them were exceptionally quick. And obviously, you're not going to be getting an entire squad of exceptionally quick players at this level of football. You tend to get either youngsters who are growing in or players slightly possibly past their prime. It's very rare to actually get players like Maggio, who's 25 and slash in his prime, but this is kind of his level. He's four stars now. He could probably do a job at League One. Well, he did do a job at League One, actually. Same with Sam Stubbs, who has a little bit more potential. This level, League One level, maybe. What club is his, What club is he wearing there? It is Edo Den Haag. I was very confused why he had a Dutch shirt on. He must have gone there on loan at some point. Yeah, he went there on loan. But I suppose I'd better show you what we're working with. And Oh, okay, £15,000. So not a lot is the answer. 100% of transfer revenue is made until we've made £8 million, which unlikely. Thereafter, this will drop to 60 I never understand those. I never understand why it's 100% and then drops when you make money. You'd think it'd be the other way around, but three grand in the wage budget as well is not a lot, really. Um, it seems to be a fairly reasonable and well thought out wage structure here at Exeter to begin with. Obviously, the loanies who disappears in one year's time. The only one with value, really, in terms of one year run outs are, is Jake Caprice at right back, who is wanted by teams in the tier above. Only on a hit on a quid a week, but could get us 50 grand, maybe, if we're lucky which we could then reinvest. 
I will say the low knees are on a lot of money, but I'm thankful for the goalkeeper. In fact, I think they are effectively the two highest owners plus San Nombe, who better who better grow into that potential. Josh Key is actually worth the most, and I'm not fully certain he actually has a role here because he's not good enough to be a right back. Although tackling actually weirdly isn't the most important thing for right backs in this year's game, but he is lacking in positioning as well, and he's not particularly pacey to counteract that lack of tackling. You saw it with Lamptey in the Newcastle save. If they've got the pace, then the tackling isn't necessarily that important because as long as they can recover and get into a tackling position, then it's all right. But he is lacking that just pure pace and positioning. So, in fact, he's valued at quite a lot. Matt Jay is staying because I think he's pretty much an Exeter... Wanted by the same teams, actually, Key is. Yeah, he's already got 100 appearances. A bit of an Exeter stalwart. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's actually in the info page already. Uh, no, actually, he's not even in favour personnel, which does surprise me, but I imagine he will be there very quickly. And the other thing to check is real quick. I'll stop my size so you can see the bottom end. Salford are favourites, apparently. Swindon, Bristol Rovers, who I actually tipped to go up at the beginning of the season. That went well. Sorry, Matty Longstaff went to loan on Mansfield. Mansfield? You're better than that, Matty. Because we were playing him in the Premier League. Ah, interesting though, the goalkeeper that we have on loan from Sheffield Wednesday is actually the best player in League 2, apparently, just full stop. But they're the only one we have on the list. Wait, hang on, we're now predicted 15th? Ah, well, we'll have to do something about that, won't we? But that's the gist of it here at Exeter. This first week, I'm going to be doing three uploads this week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next week, probably the same. I'm wanting to do another three next week, and then we'll probably drop down to two, two a week again. We'll see how I feel, basically, on that front. I'd quite like to do maybe three a week, just considering the level that we're at and the amount of journey that we're definitely going to have to do. I'd be very surprised if we get three back-to-back -back promotions, so it's going to be a lot longer of a journey than we're used to here, possibly. It's been a while since I've been in this level of football, barring the actual stint here in the Game Blast. It's been two years, of course, ever since we did York all the way from the Vanarama North. So I'll see you very soon here, though. Uh, but before then, you may catch me on Twitch. I tend to do Tuesdays and Fridays. They're the days I seem to have the most free time on at the moment so that will change of course because my schedule does change relatively frequently annoyingly but mondays and fridays seem to be for the foreseeable future twitch.tv forward slash amazing cheek like i say with hanover there we're in the champions league it's not gone well so far but the league campaign is still continuing strongly there i'm only in the third season still plenty of journey to be had over there as well but i'll see you very soon here too hopefully like comment subscribe let me know what you think let me know who's good at this level they might have to wait till the January window to come in because I will likely have done the entire transfer window by the time this goes live. But let me know who's good at this level because it's been a while since I've been down here, like I said. But thank you for joining me. Until next time, ta -ra.